Are you a music producer without even knowing the fundamentals of music theory? Completely okay. You have seen a lot of people do music production, compose songs without even having the knowledge of music theory. But you know what the hard truth is? Your workflow is really slow. That's the hard truth and you cannot deny it. And I'm not meaning by all the big music theory and all the in-depth knowledge that you need to know when it comes to theory. I'm just laying out the basic fundamentals that you need to know, like major scales, minor scales, major chords minor chords you need to know just the basic music theory at least in order to have really good melodies so that's what we're going to do in today's video i'm going to teach you the basics of music theory and we're going to dive into the major scales in music in the coming series we'll also learn about minor scales and about the chords as well when you know music theory like this you'll be able to create melodies faster and you'll be able to write music in a much better sense instead of you know trying something in the piano and just you know listening to it and if it's nice or not now you know what suits well what notes sound well together why do they sound well together and all those knowledge you'll be able to get it by the end of this video a lot of you right now i know you're thinking since it's music theory you just want to brush away from this video but let me guarantee you this is a very simple concept and when you just put in the time and the patience to learn this you'll eventually make good melodies i request you all to really stay till the end of this video and learn everything in this video so that you can become a better producer and do better songs to better composition i'm florina jane otherwise known as flow of music and if you want to see a lot of tutorials on music production especially in logic pro then you need to subscribe to my channel so without any delay let's get started if you are an artist and you like to draw you like to paint i can draw something i can do it in black and white but after that if you want to give color to your painting and you don't even know what color exists then what are you going to do when i put yellow to the sun when i put blue to the background sky when i put green to the grass that's when my painting will look good and how do i know that because i know the color of the grass is green i know the color of the sun is yellow and when i paint it as well it looks nice otherwise i can do whatever i want and you might call it a painting but it may not look like a painting so that's exactly when it comes to music as well you can do whatever you want but sometimes it might not sound good maybe you think it sounds good when you listen to somebody else's song then you'll wonder why is that sounding good why is mine bad what am i missing the answer to that just lies in the fundamentals of music and that is the reason why you need music theory so you need to know what are the sounds available to you what what are the sounds that sound better when they are played together which sound doesn't suit with this why does it not suit with this all that you just have to know then after knowing that you can play around with whatever you want but knowing that is very crucial when you are especially a music producer so now that you know the importance of music theory let's dive into my laptop and i'll show you what are the different notes that we have and how we can form beautiful scales so we're going to start by looking at a piano this was taken from logic pro so i just did musical typing i did command and k and you get this you have two views by the way this and that I'm choosing this view because it's easier to explain. To know what colors are available to you. In other words, to know what musical notes are available to you. The piano is the best way to explain that. So there are totally 12 notes. That's all. Only 12 notes. If you're completely new to music theory, you might be wondering, Flo, there's a lot of keys over here. There's so many white notes, so many black notes. How are you saying there's only 12 notes? Let's break it down. So I'm going to start from this. I'm going to start from that note. Just forget about what's written here, okay? Just look at that. So we're going to first break the piano into sections, each section having 12 notes. So we'll start from that note. So you have three white notes. In between them, you have two black notes. Okay, so you've got three white, two black. After that, you have four whites. One, two, three, four. You've got three blacks in between. One, two, three. So in total, you have 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So you've got 12 notes. Now, with just that picture, look at the next section. You have 3 white notes, 2 black, 4 white notes, 3 black. Again, as you go forward, you'll have 3 white notes, 2 black notes, and so on and so forth. That's all you can see. I can, you know, expand it also. But yeah, we'll keep it like this. So you can do that downward as well. So 3, 2, 4, 3. When you come back, you have 3, 2, 4, 
3. So it's just a repetition of those 12 notes. The only difference is the frequency of each note is different. Let me give you a short brief about it. When you have low frequency, the sound will sound very low. When it's high frequency, it will sound high. For example, 3 white note, 2 black note. The first note. 3 white note, 2 black note. The first note. Technically, both are the same note. But one is low. The other one is high. That is frequency. The notes may be same, but the pitch of that note might be differing. One might be low, one might be high. So you have different frequencies, but you have the same notes repeating again. So now that we know we only have 12 notes to deal with, let's name those 12 notes. We name these notes in terms of the alphabet. So everything is ranging from A to G. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Only seven. Now again, there's a controversy that might arise. You're telling there's 12 notes, but you're naming them with only seven alphabets. Let me get to that point. Before we dive into the 12 notes, with these seven alphabets, let us name only the white notes. There's going to be a slight difference. We're not going to start with A through G. We're going to start with C, end in G, then cover up A and B. Stick with me. You might want to grab a pen or something to write this down. We're going to do C, D, E, F, G. Then the remaining that we left were A and B. So this is the order we're going to follow. I'm going to start from here. 3 white note, 2 black note, 4 white note, 3 black note. So this is my starting note. This is going to be C, D, E, F, G, A, B. You're done with your 7 notes. So can somebody guess what comes after that? You have another 3 white note, 2 black note. So we started with C, I told you. So this is again another C. The pitch is different. Name the seven notes again C, D, E, F, G, A, B. And you land on a C again. So we are done with the seven notes. We've got five more notes that you need to name. And those are nothing but the black notes. The simple concept is when there's a note above another note, this is D, there's a note right above D, right? So when you go from a white note in forward position to a black note, you name that as a sharp. So if this is D, this is D sharp. Only in the places where you have black notes, you're going to do that naming. Let's do it with sharps. So C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E. Do you have a black note after E? No. So you don't have an E sharp. So after E, you get F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B, same scenario, you don't have a black note, so you again come back to C. These are all about sharps. So you've got C sharp, D sharp, F sharp, G sharp, A sharp. That along with the seven notes in white come up to 12 notes. But there's another thing that you need to learn, something called as flats. A black note that comes above a white note is called a sharps. When you come in the backward direction, you call it a flat. So we saw D, so this is D sharp. If this is D, if you come back, that's called as a D flat. Okay, so D, D flat. So C, instantly you don't have another black note behind, so you don't have a C flat. So you have C, B, B flat, A, A flat, G, G flat, F. Don't have a black note, so you come back to E, E flat, D, D flat, and end in C. So these are the things about sharps and flats. So sharp, you raise it by one. Flat, you lower it by one. I told you the notes may repeat again and again, but the pitch is different. That is called as an octave. So distance between this from one note to the same note, you can either do it above or below. So if this is C and I want to play that C, I'm jumping one octave above. If I want to go below C, I'm jumping an octave lower. So if I want to go from this C to that C, I jump two octaves above. You understood the point, right? And it's applicable not only for C, for anything. So if this is G, an octave higher G. From this G to that G, I'm jumping three octaves. 
So this is what is called as an octave. There's another concept that you need to know before we jump into a major scale. That is semitone and a tone. Or you can call it as a half step and a full step. So we'll first learn what a half step is or a semitone. A semitone is nothing but the note next to it. As simple as that. So if this is C, a semitone of C is what? C sharp, just the note next to it. So a semitone of G, note right next to it, G sharp. If you want a semitone lower, G, G flat. So that's just the idea of semitone. It's just the note right next to it. Semitone for E, right next to it, you go higher. F, or it can also be E flat. Yeah, so right now when we talk only about forward, then a semitone for D is D sharp. A semitone for B is C. A semitone for F sharp is G. A semitone for B flat, for example, you can either call it as A sharp or B flat. So a semitone for B flat is B. A tone or a whole step. That is nothing but when you skip a note and land on the next note. So if this is C, a whole note of C is Skip a note, come down, D. A whole note for D, you skip a note, E. Now, a whole note for E, you skip a note and land on F sharp. That is the idea of whole note. So, a whole note for B, for example, the note right next to it is C, so you skip that, land on C sharp. Now, let's dive a little bit deeper into theory and understand something called as scales. Scales is like a color palette, okay? You choose the colors that you want and you know when you choose those colors, they're going to blend well and when you put it on a painting, it's going to be beautiful. That is scales. So, scales are made up of seven notes. So, totally how many notes you have? You have 12 notes and out of those 12 notes, when you pick seven notes, that gel well together, that forms a scale. Doesn't matter whether it is minor or major, in both scenarios, when you pick seven notes that gel well together, that is a scale. So we have so many different scales, but right now we're gonna only look into the major scales. We have a very simple formula for that. Don't think this is a math class. It's a very easy formula just for you to remember the scales and you know, figure out the seven notes that sound well. You can use it in your song. So I'm gonna shift this window right now. So we're gonna learn the formula for W, W, H, W, 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 H. What do you think these W's and H mean? They are nothing but the whole note and the half note. So let's pick any note that you want. So right now we're gonna do C major scale. We're gonna apply this formula to figure out what seven notes gel well when it comes to the C major scale. I'm going to simultaneously show you the piano as well for your reference. The only thing is it needs to start with C and it needs to end in C. That way you'll know if you apply the formula correctly. Okay, so it has to start with C, end with C. Any scale, for example, if you take D major scale, start with D, end with D. So for C, I'm going to start with C. After writing the first note, I'm going to start doing my formula. So C is the first. Now we need the whole note of C. We'll check it out, the whole note of C. Whole note, you skip a note and you land on something else. So if this is C, I need the whole note of C, which is, you skip a note, come here, it is D. So let's write that down, you have D. Next, you need another whole note. Whole note of D. So after D, skip a note, come here, it's E. So let's write that down. Now you need a half note, half note of E. Go back there, half note is the note right next to it. After E, you have F. So we're gonna write that down. We have F. Now we need another whole note, whole note of F. So after F, skip a note, come here, it's G. So you write down G. Now we need another whole note, whole note of G. Skip a note, come here, it's A. Now we need another whole note. So whole note of A, after A, you skip a note, come here, it's B. So you write B and finally you need a half note. So half note of B. The note right next to it is C. So you write C. 
So your starting note and your ending note is same, corresponds with the name of the major scale. So these are the seven notes. Technically, if you think about it, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Thing is, C is repeated twice, okay? I told you, right? Starting, ending, keep it the same. So apart from that, these are the seven notes that you need for a C major scale. So let's play it out and see. You don't have any sharps or flats here, which means you don't have any black notes. That is the sound of a major scale. And the sound of a major scale is happy, it's joyful. And with that formula, you can do basically any major scale in that matter. We'll do one more scale, G major. Okay, we're gonna do the same formula, but you might get a couple of black notes. Let's see what we're getting. G is my first note. So now I need whole note of G. Just count it C, D, E, F, G. That is my G. So I need a whole note. So after G, skip a note, A. A. Now we need another whole note of A. This is my A. So it's B. We're going to write down B. Now we need a half note of B. So after B, C. So we're going to do C. Need another whole note of C. So after C, I don't know why it's doing that. But anyways, we need a whole note of C. Skip a note, come here. It's D. So we write D. Now we need another whole note of D. So after D, skip a note, come here, E. So you write E. Now we need another whole note of E. So after E, you skip a note and you land on the next one. So I skip this note and I come over here, which is F sharp. So F and this is how I write sharps. I need a half note of F sharp, so you just land the one next to it, which is G again. So you started on the same note, ended in the same thing, and these are the seven notes you need. The only sharp that you have is F sharp. Everything else is the same white notes. So this is how you come up with the seven notes for any major scale. Two rules that you need to follow. Rule number one, you need to make sure that you write down the name of all the notes have seven letters, right? You have C, D, E, F, G, A, B. So even if it is sharp, it combines around here. So I can write F sharp. So in this scenario, I don't have F. I only have F sharp. But the letter is still repeated, right? So make sure that the letter is available to once. Second rule is no two alphabets must be repeated. So no repeat. For example, oh, the spelling is wrong. Okay, that is F sharp. When I come backward, it is G flat, correct? So I can technically write this also as G flat. But what is the problem over here? When I write G flat, after that, when I do a half note from G flat to G, again, I need to write G. But now the problem is there are two Gs. There's no F anywhere. So this G, I cannot remove it because I told you the starting and the ending must be the same. So my only option would be to change this G flat into an F sharp. The note is the same. However, when you write it down, you write it down as F sharp and not G flat. So these are the two rules that you need to follow. One is you need to write down all the letters once and no two letters has to be repeated. These are the only two rules that you need to follow. With this, you can write the notes for any major scale and you can figure out those seven notes that you need in that particular key. Let me give you one more tip before we end this. Now, this might sound easy because we've only dealt with the white note major scales, right? If you want to write the major scale for a black note, for example, I want to write the seven notes available in the key of this note. If I want to do a major scale for a black note, just do it as a flat and continue meaning I need to do it as a E flat. So this will be called as an E flat major scale rather than a D sharp major scale. I'll explain why. Let us first try it as a D sharp. So we're going to do D sharp. My first note will be a D sharp. Just remember the rules. All notes has to be available once 
and no two notes has to be repeated. Now I need a whole note. So whole note of D sharp. So this is D sharp. I move forward. So after D, so C, D, E. Now I need to write something in E. It can be sharp or flat or whatever. So after D sharp, I need a whole note. So I'm skipping a note and landing here. What is that note's name? It is F. But I just left a note called E away. So I need to theoretically write it as E sharp. Theoretically, that is how you do it because I need to include all the note names, okay? So I did D sharp. I need to do something in E. So I have a whole note. I need to do it as an E sharp only. So this might sound a bit confusing, E sharp. Now let's try the next one. Now you need another whole note. So D, E, you need to write something in terms of F. You need a whole note. So this is technically our E sharp right now. You need a whole note. So I'm going to skip a note and land here. Technically, this note is G. But theoretically, you need to write it in terms of F. So in terms of F means this is F. This is F sharp. So I need to write this note as F double sharp. I need to write it as F double sharp. So as I move it in this way, isn't it confusing? Just because you have to write something in terms of another note, Everything is becoming confusing. So let's just remove that, remove this. And instead of D sharp, I'm going to write this as E flat major scale. So the symbol for flat is this small letter B. So instead of this, I'm going to write it as E flat major scale. So let's try that out. So you have E flat. Now I need a whole note. So you have E flat whole note and I need to write it in terms of F now. So after E you get F right? So E flat whole note. So 1, 2 F. Automatically I land on F. So you have F another whole note you need to write so after F, skip a note come here. You have G then another half note so after G you need to write something in terms of A so we need a half note of G after G that is our half note but it's G sharp. We already wrote a G over here. So instead of that, we're going to write it as, what is this note? A. So you can write it as A flat. So I'm going to write A flat. Next, I need another whole note of A flat. So now after A, you get B. So one, two. This is B flat. So you get B flat. Next, you need another whole note after B flat. You need to write something in C. One, two. You're landing on C, which is very good. So C. Now you need another whole note after C. Whole note is D. Now you need a half note. You need to write it in terms of E because after D, you get E. So after D, half note is D sharp. You can't write that. So you need to write it as E flat. Now this made our life much more easier than all the double sharps and the E sharp and all those things, right? So that is why it's better if you want to write a major scale for a black note, do it as a flat. Don't do it as a sharp. Once I have all the notes that I need for a particular scale, that is those seven notes, you can play whatever you want. You can play anything within that seven notes and it'll sound great. We didn't touch chords yet, but with scales itself, if you want to make a melody in C major scale, you saw that all the notes were white. I can do anything. That was a masterpiece that I just created, but <laughs> you get the point, right? And you decide on a key of a song and you know what seven notes come in that key. You can create any melody by just juggling between those seven notes and it'll sound great. So there was somebody else who asked me in the comment for a music theory video and that is the reason why I created this video. And I hope you understood this. I hope you understood the importance of music theory. We're not diving into a really deep concept in music theory. These are the fundamentals that any musician has to know in order to, you know, do really good melodies and write good music. So I hope this video was useful. I hope you learned something out of this. 
Stay tuned and subscribe to my channel if you want to know more about music theory. We are going to deal with minor scales. We're going to do chords as well. That is the basic information that any musician has to know. So thank you so much for watching. Keep making music and I'll see you guys in another video.